did you do? Okay, I, I hit the right arrow. Control shift down, and I look at all my data, it adds up to 100%, right? Also remember that in order to get this at the 100% that we represented our data on the left, which represents test scores, not in the format of decimals or percentages in this case, but as whole numbers. So if you have the information of test scores in the format of percentages or decimals, sometimes it might be easier to multiply at times of 100, representing the data as basically whole numbers so that when you get your percentages over here, then it'll basically add up to the 100%. So now we can ask questions such as, or this calculation, for example, means that what would be the likelihood, for example, that we would get a 64%. We're at the 2.2% uh, likelihood. That's not the question of what's the likelihood that I get 64 or under. That would be one of the cumulative types of questions. So then we can, of course, ask questions. What's the likelihood that I get 64% or above? Uh, for example, and we'll do some of those uh, calculations in uh, uh, a little bit here. But for now, let's continue plotting out our graph. Now, you could just take these percentages and plot the graph out this way. So I can select my uh, item up top. I'm going to hit Control Shift down, and then I'm going to say uh, Control Backspace, taking me back to the top, so I can insert another histogram. So I can go into, or let's let's do a uh, actual chart this time. So I can say this is going to be charts and this is going to be a bar chart, not a histogram. So the bar chart. And of course you get this nice smooth bell curve looking thing because of course we did this with our, our actual formulas uh, and functions. So this is going to be the P of X. I'll leave, I'll leave that there and it's graphing now the percent, uh, the percent uh, likelihoods but we need to fix that bottom bit. So I'm gonna select the data up top. I'm gonna to go into the select data and on the, I'm gonna edit this side and we wanna pick up our numbers, which are starting at 34, not one. That's why it's, a, that's why it's messed up here. So we're gonna put our cursor on 34, control shift down. And, and then I'm gonna say, okay, now you gotta be kind of careful making sure it picks it up over here. Cause sometimes Excel gets a little, a little finicky over here. So if this just has one number, then something got messed up when you did that and you have to do it again. But I'm gonna say, okay. And so now if I scroll up top, so now we've got this nice bell curve and that middle point is around, you know, the 75 at that middle point, nice and smooth. Okay, and so then we can also add an area uh, type of bell curve. I'm gonna pull this to the side. We will get back to it soon because we could then think, I would like to compare, is there a way to compare my data to the actual data, the actual data versus the bell curve. So we'll think about that in a little bit. But first, note that you can also plot this with an area. So I'm gonna select this item again, Control Shift down, and then I'm gonna hit Control Backspace. And this time we're gonna go into the Insert tab and we're gonna go to the Charts and Graphs. And if you select, I believe this one, then down here, you've got your areas down below. So we'll pick this as the area. And so I'll pick that one. And so now you've got a graph uh, that gives you that the area graph. And this is the one uh, that we can, we can work with because oftentimes when you're thinking about the bell curve, you're trying to get the area under the curve, right? That's gonna be part of our calculations because that's gonna give us our, our probability. So let's, once again, I gotta fix this, this bottom bit so I'm gonna go up top and go to the select data. I'm gonna to go to the edit over here and select this one again, and then pick our X's holding control shift down. Usually like you could hit the control backspace, but again, sometimes that messes it up. So I just like to go okay, and then okay, and see if it picks it up and be awfully careful with Excel when we do that part, because again, Excel gets a little wonky sometimes right there. So there we, there we have it. So we'll get a little bit more fancy on this one and say, can we, uh, can we uh, plot questions like if it's over a certain amount or under a certain amount and could we get the Z-score on there? So we'll do that uh, in future presentations. But for now, let's put this at the bottom of our stack of charts, cool charts that we've been making. So notice that if you just wanna see the shape of it, 
the bar chart works well the area chart is going to give us that area however uh, so, which is what we're usually thinking in when we're thinking of the of the normal distribution now we could compare this to our actual data so let's do our actual and then let's put our frequency frequency that's totally not spelled right is it there's no way I'll spell check it oh they say it is I don't know I'll take their word for it I still have my doubt font group let's go black white wrap it center it I'll make it a little bit larger and now I'm gonna do a frequency of our actual data to see how many times out of the thousand test scores we have that we get to each of these X's so this is gonna count our actual data in accordance with these X's so I'm gonna say this equals out of the frequency tab and then I'm, this is an array formula so fancy array formula I'm gonna pick my data over here control shift down all of the data control backspace up to the top then I need to pick my X arrays so I'm gonna say comma and then put my cursor on the X arrays control shift down control backspace taking me back up so this is saying all right, Excel, I would like you to find all of this data uh, and see and, and put it into the groups, our buckets, with these numbers being, in essence, the top part of the bucket, right? So it's going to take everything below uh, 34 up to and including 34, and then everything from 34 uh, or above 34 up to and including 35, and so on. Hopefully, I got the cutoffs right there. So if I scroll down, there it is. Now it picked up this last bit down there, which I don't, I don't want it to hang out that far. So I'm gonna change this to three. And so there we have it. And so then if I put my totals down here, I can say Alt Enter. This should add up to 100%. Let's percentify it, Home tab number, percentify. And then Alt Enter for the sum function. This should add up to 1,000 because that's how many we told Excel to count. That's how many sample test scores that we had in our data set. Now, if I want to compare this, I can't compare this to the P of X directly. I, I could make a histogram from this, right? I could make a histogram and I'll come up to a similar kind of histogram. But I, what I'd like to do is say, well, how can I get the percentages? So I can either, I can either make this into percentages or I can make the percentages into a frequency by multiplying the percentages times a thousand. Now, normally it'd be easier to say percent of total to make to make our data into a percent. So I'm gonna say black, white, uh, center. So I'm gonna take every number divided by the total. This equals this number divided by control shift down. I just want that thousand. So enter double clicking on it i'm going to make this second number absolute f4 so that that bottom number doesn't move down as i copy the formula down i'm going to make it a percent before copying it down home tab number group percentifying it couple decimals fill handle double clicking it copying it down so now i have a set of data similar to this set of data so this is my actual percent of the total and this would be my predicted you know percents of whatever total i'd be using and so then i can i can take my difference and i can say okay what's the difference between my actual data and this is the perfect bell curve minus my actual percent data percentifying this home tab number percentify add some decimals and then copy it on down so now we can see our differences here so when we're thinking about our data then i'll stop it here we'll continue on with this next time but the general idea is we can take our actual data set in real life in practice you can actually build your data set but you would need the mean and the standard deviation to do so in practice you might not know those numbers of course and you would take your data and then calculate those numbers the mean the standard deviation if the median is similar to the mean it's likely it might follow a normal distribution so you might then plot a normal distribution in this format being then able to create our graphs and then we can also look at our actual data and compare it to the normal distribution at each point 
which could also give us an indication as to how close the actual data mirrors a normal distribution. We'll continue on with our graphs in a future presentation.